Hello and welcome back. I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's wrap up this Crusader Kings 2 campaign officially and uh, get ready for the next patch. So I do want to just put out a quick video here to let you guys know that I am going to wrap this up. There was a poll in the comment section on the previous video that actually asked uh, what we should do. And most people thought it was about time to wrap this one up. But there was a number of, su number of uh, suggestions and comments saying, hey, you can't really wrap it up while... The Kingdom of, the Kingdom of David is your primary title. You gotta, you gotta make the Kingdom of Israel your... Yeah, so let's do that. We're gonna make, uh, the Kingdom of Israel our primary title. Huzzah! Yay! Go Jews! And, uh, now we get a fancy pretty color. Israel! Nice! Um, and then beyond that, we also needed to build, like, the third temple, which is, uh, just you click the button. So we already have the money for it. So that's cool! So, yeah, done! Construction of the third temple will begin immediately on Temple... On Temple Mount, overlooking Jerusalem, the design of the new temple is greater in scope than even King Solomon's fabled first temple. Your architects estimate that the construction will take roughly four years. When it is finished, it will truly be a sight to see. Okay, so we're going to play for four years at least, it sounds like. So that's good news. Uh, let's see, what else? Beyond that, um, how old are we? Are we going to die? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to wrap this campaign up in favor of uh, starting a new one. However, that new one will not start until the next patch, which should be soon... Uh, based on the dev diaries that I've been reading, and uh, definitely very much looking forward to that patch. Gotta try to remember how to play this game a little bit here. So, we're still in a war with the Caliph, and uh, it's a defensive war. It's the Sunni second, apparently. Ah, right, the, the Shias have been jihading us like crazy. This is the Sunni Jihad, and they're all trying to help out. So these guys don't have nearly as much of an issue with uh, travel distance, so they can actually get here without suffering tons of attrition. However, uh, I don't think they're going to live very long. Let's see who we have available for commanders. Got two available commander slots. Let's grab Rahad and let's grab uh, Tiferi. Because he seems like a nice guy. We've got a guy who's pretty good at pursuit and damage and narrow flank. Which is uh, an interesting uh, modifier. Narrow flank, I don't know. I feel like narrow flank is still like one of those one of those combat modifiers that it's like, not very good. You'd like to you'd like to use it. You'd like to like have these epic battles where that's the thing. That's the thing that made you win. But it's one of those things where it's like, well, if you're relying on that to win battles, then you're putting yourself in a position where you could lose. Like, what if the guy doesn't get the narrow flank? So, I don't know. I would I would almost always take a different modifier if I could over that one. So anyway, um. Build the temple. We've got uh, we got a little bit of succession crisis uh, potentially here with the successors having these extra kingdoms and stuff. But uh, uh, they're apparently voting for Duke Amare. He is my kinsman, so that's fortunate. Uh, they are both elective. Good, agnetic elective. This time we didn't have that problem where by creating a random kingdom, uh, and also this is kind of annoying that we actually have a kingdom of Israel. Can we create? Can we create an empire? I want to do that. The kingdom of Israel. It is du jour, part of nothing, so it's part of the Saramzhin Empire, which we cannot usurp because we are at war and because we don't control enough of it anyway. Um, is there no button? I think I think if you own three kingdoms, you can create an empire. What if we just did that? Let's see. Titular... No, not titular. We can create the Kingdom of Baluchistan. We can create the Kingdom of Arabia. Uh... I'm going to try it, just because I know that I'm not going to play another episode after this, so let's just do it. And I'm 90% sure that once you have, you might have to be at peace. Yeah, found a new empire. We need 8,000 prestige and 1,000 gold, and then yes, we can found a new empire regardless of the fact that we don't actually have it. We're 42, let's just pray we don't die while we have these extra um, uh, extra kingdoms laying about. Make sure we have a commander in charge for this stuff here. We'll put Tay in charge for a little, little bit of movement, and these other guys. I don't know where the other leaders went. Honestly, uh... All I really want to do is is finish this temple, and we need to get back control of Arabia so that we can actually have ticking war score. Let's have you go over here. Let's have you go away. Uh, you guys can all combine up and actually not combine up. You're going to split in half, split in half, and go siege some stuff down. Losing sieges up into the north. Okay. Fair enough. Pull some men off, just so we suffer a little bit less attrition. Oh, that is a dangerous stack there. What if instead... All oh, right, of course we have a new successor. Or, no, I never did vote for somebody, did I? Who was I voting for for the Kingdom of David? I wanted Prince Jima. Can we get everyone to vote for Jima for everything else?
Let's wait and see what happens here. We have right now title loss in succession because they're not currently following the votes. That's fine. We're just not going to die. It's just not going to happen. Obviously. Okay, Alexandria's supply limit is only 8k. Well, I'd rather have about nearly 8k there if I could. Why? Okay. I changed map modes. That's why it stopped being that color. We lost a battle. We lost this battle. That's that's kind of shocking. Defensive bonus in the mountains, I guess, did it for us. We captured a count. Uh, it's time for good old-fashioned murder or ransom all of the... <laughs> Saramsahid? Was that the name, I think? Oh man, I can't wait for the next patch and the ability to actually uh, have all this stuff where you can manage, manage, manage prisoners. Those are the two things that I want the most. I want the buttons, the new buttons, and I really, really want to be able to raid again. You know what? Maybe we should just do like a non-Iron Man campaign so that I can... I can turn on raiding for everyone. Because it just feels like one of those mechanics where like if you don't have it, you're missing out on so much. It's just such a big part of... At least the way I like to play. Alright, you are rebels. We don't care about them. We should either go here or try to fight this, but I can't really see 6,000 safely beating that other army. Stop sieging my stuff, man! Don't appreciate this. If we had no uh, slow fever, would we have a better supply? I believe yes, so hopefully that goes away soon. Thirty-nine war score so far. Don't really plan on doing any other major aggressive actions here. If we could just get our ticking war score back, I think we'd actually have the war won. So, uh, do we have... I think we have a siege leader. Nope. No, we did. We did at one point, and I think he died. Because, you know, reasons. Maybe we should do that. Maybe. What do you guys think? In, your com in the comments down below, let me know what you, think, what you think about this idea. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, I created a mod called Clear Combat. And, uh... It's been two years? Two and a half years, probably, since I did that? What do you think we should do? Should we maybe even revitalize that mod? Revisit it? And, uh, we could turn it into a stream where we... We actually, like, do all the stream stuff. Like, the mod creation itself, live. With, uh, your input and your feedback. And we could add some other stuff, too, right? We could do that idea I talked about a while ago, like, give some generals a little bit of siege stuff. Or at least... I don't know. The main thing I would really like is just if you didn't have to put the damn leaders in the center. I don't I don't know if there's a way that I could mod it so that these like exterior commander's stats got transferred to the center. I don't think I could do that. Not that I know how. Not in a way that I can think of it off the top of my head. With your strong devotion to the Jewish faith, uh, you have spent countless hours reading the Torah and thinking about the meaning and origin of the sacred words therein. There are some things that don't quite correspond to what the rabbis are saying in their sermons. Lose zealous, or gain piety, and embrace the Samaritan heresy. Huh. Well, what happens to the temple? I mean, we're building a temple for the Jews. We can't. I have no right to question them. Come on. I mean, if we were still playing beyond this episode, maybe. But even then, I, I don't think that's a good idea. Alright, so I don't know where my organizers are. I've got two organizers. Uh, you are my marshal? No. Commanders are the only ones after your marshal. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you are currently leading troops in Alexandria. You're already there. Damn. So I can't put him there. What about Tay? Is he currently fighting? I think he was over here. And I also... Remind me, I need to keybind this button. This resign button. I'm gonna... I should write that down, but I'm not going to. Because we're gonna stay focused on the moment. Study organization, hell yeah. It's not the best combat trait, but we'll take it. Anyway, uh, the whole idea was that we wanted... You're going to arrive on the 22nd, you'll arrive on the 17th. Let's get the first army there faster and not worry about the other bit. Just so we get a little bit more men over there, a little bit of a reinforcement. We've got relatively balanced, they've got more in the center, so it's good that we're, we're coming in from the center flank. And I know, I know, the center flank is not really the right term, it should be called the vanguard or something like that. But Paradox calls them all flanks, so I call them all flanks for reasons. Because paradox, because paradox. Hashtag paradox math, right? Ugh, that attrition's horrendous. Okay, you guys are all heading to Quatora, which has a supply limit of 13k. Even though Alexandria is this massive city, this inland province has more supply. Nice. Uh, let's um, assault since we're here. 
And then beyond that, I want to take uh, the best organizer, which is actually me now. No, it's not. Damn. Nagasi here is still a little bit faster with 47% movement. Damn. Here I was thinking I was a cool guy, but I'm not. Uh, let's not lead troops in the place that has disease. Seems like a bad idea. Okay, 60% war score again. If we had that darn ticking war score, we could actually be done with this and we could then go ahead and start... ...speeding through the game to get this temple built. I don't want to assault with 4 to 1 ratio, that seems pretty risky. Kingdom of Arabia. So we need to get back control of... ...all of this. If I let that siege down there complete... That's another thing we're going to have to do. Plus, that's my own personal holding, so we can capture some family members or something, which would be kind of annoying. Spread these guys out, balance them a little bit. And this was recently done. Let's just assault these two back. And shall we chase? I think we shall. And we'll return after that. Confirm that that happened. Let's have you go that way. Let's have you go that way as well. Supply's very good there. And he's surrendering. Excellent. Cool. Uh, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. We surrender under these terms. He loses piety. They lose 10% moral authority. We gain 10% moral authority because, you know, we're already at 99. We need to be at 109, obviously. Uh, yeah. Stop. Stop jihadding me. All right. Everybody, head to the party up here. Unless you are part of a retinue, in which case you can... Uh, non-retinue, rather, which in which case you can just go away right now. Some of these men will not return. That's weird. Uh, you guys can all head to provinces that are adjacent, so we can get you stood down. We have no rebellion, we have nothing. We got nada. Cool. Hide this whole thing so we have more screen real estate available. And uh, let's stay on speed 4 and just try to keep the game not paused. So, we're at peace. Uh, we need 8,000 prestige. That's not an insignificant number. I mean, that is going to take a little bit of effort. we do not on retinue? We have room for retinue. Nice. Let's do that. A little bit more of that. So this is my retinue over here, and we've got a little bit of retinue over there, so safely march this way, please, if you would. Battles can be usurped. We can usurp the, uh, the Sultanate of Egypt. Um, sure. Sounds good. That gives me prestige at the cost of money. Sounds great. Let's do it. Uh, title loss in succession. It's shocking. I uh, probably have... What is the what is the succession law here? Magnetic Gavelkin. Ugh. We changed the rules. Um, I actually haven't done this in a while. I forget how to do it. I think you have to, like, make it your primary. So that was the Kingdom of Egypt. Alright, so we go F1. Kingdom of Egypt. Make primary. Go to rules and laws and stuff, and then we have to reign for 10 years ruling this thing to be able to change it. That's horrible. Well, let's just go back to Israel. Which actually, having the titular kingdom of Israel as our primary reduces our levy, I think. Let's take a look. Right now we've got 30 out of 39k. The largest kingdom that we own is the kingdom of David. If we go back to the kingdom of David, again, mark those numbers, 30k and 39k. Your du jour dukes in your your primary kingdom give you more direct liege levy. So I think we should get more if we make this our primary. No. It actually went down. That's kind of weird. How, how on earth does that make sense? Is Egypt actually better in some ways or something? No way. Maybe my math is wrong. Maybe I just don't know how to play this game. It's entirely possible. Let's try another one then. What about uh, the Kingdom of Arabia? Let's try that one. We've made this our primary. Now we have... Uh, 37k. It's even smaller. Nice. Uh, let's go back to... Egypt one more time. Maybe it's just not dynamically updating. And maybe the issue is that uh, the opinion is being changed or something. I, I suppose that's possible. No, it's definitely smaller with Kingdom of David. I don't I don't get that. I don't, that doesn't make sense to me at all. What about Kingdom of Israel? I almost just destroyed it. That would have been horrible. Ah, let's just take Kingdom of Israel. I don't really care. Uh, Alright, so the Kingdom of Baluchistan, the Kingdom of Abyssinia. Uh, we don't have the money for it. That's weird. 
Alright, I hired a bunch of retinue. Uh, do we have prisoners? Maybe we can get some money that way. I'd also be interested in checking out some mods, again. Uh, known plots. Let's stop doing the plot stuff. So we can hopefully imprison some people, get a little bit of funding. Of course, retinue is going to cost money as we reinforce it, so that's rather unfortunate, but... I think we can get to 8,000 prestige, 1,000 gold fairly quickly. And we're just waiting on this other thing as well. To, uh, to finish the temple. Right now we're trying to groom an heir. <laughs> really? Trying to groom an heir? I have children. I have siblings, at least. I have all daughters, that's why. My wife's 48. Down with the wench. Uh, can we just divorce her? I mean, she is my... She's my wife. That's why she's at my dynasty. Uh, we cannot... Get a divorce, evidently. Uh, we could throw her in prison. It's a bit tyrannical. People wouldn't like it. I'm just saying, we could. I'm not going to, but we could. Designated regents. Hmm. Oh, look at that. This is interesting. So, the Yaakob, Yaakob of the Aswani Revolt has declared the Aswani Civil War for something or another. Alright, we got a little bit of money coming in now. Do we know of any plots? Not too interested in that one. We've got my marshal as part of a plot. You can't just freely imprison people who are members of a plot, but you can uh, you can ask them to to stop, which is the same thing as your spymaster doing it. And I think this still gives the, the opinion bonus. Yeah, discovered backing plot still does good. Although I can't recall if it does do that when the spymaster does it. There's been some weird buggy type things with it in the past, so I don't always trust it. Uh, news has reached me of a claimant. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. I don't know. I mean, we already spent 1,500 gold on the temple. And I really only planned, it on, planned on doing one extra episode. I would love, love to be able to form that empire, but it might not happen. That was this decision here. If only we could go raiding and we could get prestige and money. Both at the same time. We're like 700 gold, 2,000 prestige shy of being able to do it. The problem is that the coalition... Uh, where's the map mode for that? is massive. I mean, I've, I've got 80-some percent threat, so there's little that I can actually do to avoid, uh, to, to actually get some some more prestige via conquest. I mean, every single person is in this, is in this. And if I declare war on one of these little guys, it's gonna be, a, it's not gonna be fast, and I'm trying to, trying to power through those last four years to get the temple built. Let's just, uh, let's just, right now, let's go speed five, fast as you can, go, go, go! Not very fast. Oh dear, it's about that time, I think. I want to build a new computer. It's been two years. I'm on Fredegar 2, is uh, is this computer's name right now. Fredegar 1 died, um, kind of, because I... Uh, the graphics card died, and, and when the graphics card died, I was like 90% sure it was actually the operating system being corrupt, so I re reinstalled everything, and then I renamed him... renamed him Fredegar II. Um, but I think it's time for a new. A new beast. Two, two and a half years now, I think, since I built Fredegar, and when I built him, I built him... wrong-ish? I mean, it wasn't a horrible decision at the time, but I, I built him in, in such a way that he was supposed to be good at editing, which, as you can tell, I do so much of. I thought, back then, that the main reason I didn't do editing is because uh, my computer was really slow to render, and I was like, oh, I'll just build a computer that can render stuff, and that'll be great. And then I'll, you know, I'll edit more. Turns out that's not how it works, and that wasn't the real problem. <laughs> and so instead, uh, the core speed is just a little bit slower than it really should be. What I want to do is I want to build a new computer. It'll be the first computer I ever build that actually has a water cooling system, and I want to overclock the crap out of a very, very powerful processor. I want to get a really good one, and I want to overclock the thing to like 5.5,000 megahertz. Maybe even 5.8. Something, something insane. Something crazy. And, uh... I don't even care if I have to buy, like, multiple processors until I find one that actually can, can sustain that overclock. Because you know how they're produced, right? They, they they produce, like, thousands and thousands of, uh... Ooh, it's another plague. They produce thousands and thousands of these things at once, and they can't guarantee the quality of them. So they make them all, and then they put them through tests, and depending on the performance of the processors, then they get rated different things. And so if you have a processor that's, like, the, the brand new coolest one ever, but it doesn't perform very well, then they'll just 
Oh, hey, there's the host war. Normally these guys have like 500 gold, right? Only 100? Damn. It's a lowborn Sunni. What, what are you thinking, man? Where are you? 5,000 men? That's pathetic, dude. I can just like raise 8,000 right here. Um, We don't need the movement speed. So let's put uh, the leading the center guy here and I'll put myself on the side and I'll put the... Uh, we're not going to be fighting in the mountains. I guess we just put the 28 martial guy because he's good. Let's just wait a second. Yeah, so they'll, they'll take all these processors, right? And then they decide that... Uh, and I can't lead troops because I'm in seclusion. And I, uh, and I stopped doing I don't actually want to be in seclusion. Whatever. Just, just give me a guy. Jim and my brother. You, you shall do it. I, can't, I gotta finish my train of thought here, alright? Gosh darn it. Um, they'll take the processors and then they'll label them as if they were a different... Hey, there's the third temple. Cool. The first temple built by King Solomon was destroyed by the invading Babylonians. The second temple built under the auspices of Cyrus the Great of Persia was raised by the Romans after a terrible siege. The third temple, however, built by the great King Mekonnen shall stand for all eternity. From its position on Temple Mount, the magnificent building has been become a dominant feature of Jerusalem, instantly recognizable from far away by travelers approaching the city. Truly, Solomon himself would have been moved to tears by the sight. It is beautiful. Restore the high priesthood. Yeah, let's do that one. Sure. Uh, we have piety. Cool. Let's do it. Click. The Kohen Gadol. There has not been a Kohen Gadol, a high priest of Judaism, since the Romans destroyed the Second Temple roughly a thousand years ago. At long last, the position has been filled and the high priesthood reconstituted. Like the Jewish priests of ancient times, the Kohen Gadol was traditionally required to be a descendant of Aaron, the older brother of Moses. Due to the lack of suitable candidates, this requirement has been waived. But the new high priest still enjoys the respect of the Jewish religious communities. And the priesthood has moved into and established itself at the third temple. Long live the Kohen Gadol. So we now have a religious head. Awesome. Um, can we interact with him in any kind of interesting way whatsoever? We can We can request divorces now, apparently. That's nice. Can we, like, if I asked my... Yeah, cool. So that was the issue. Can we declare great holy wars and stuff? I want to do that. I want to holy war the Stromsahids. I want to pay them back. We have raised Levy right now. All right, back to my train of thought. Just got to finish it. Um... The God damn it. The zealots. Blah blah blah. We get a holy war holy orders. And unlikely very, very likely that in a moment here we're gonna get a uh pop up saying something about uh holy wars being great holy wars being available to us. We got regular holy wars. We've had those all game. But we don't actually have the holy wars yet. There it is! Great holy war from Mesopotamia. Okay, I don't get to choose them apparently. I am not the kill that's right, I'm not the head. But he's declared a great holy war for Mesopotamia. And we get a pop-up on the side, just like a Catholic. Nice. It's the Jewish holy war, great holy war for Mesopotamia. Uh, of course we want to join because we're a devout Jew. Good Jew man. And, uh, yeah. May you live in harmony and contentment. The Caliph. The Caliph man who owns the Saramsid. He knows what's up. This, this guy knows what to do. He, he immediately declares a great holy war for Mesopotamia. Wants all that land. It's glorious. But that is a story for another time. So anyway, I'm going to wrap the series up here. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this final video. And here's my final train of thoughts that I don't actually forget. They brand the processors as a lower tier, even though they are technically a higher tier. They just disable a few features. So long story short, sometimes you got to buy a processor or two before you find one that's actually like really, really good and can actually be overclocked to the tier that you want. So I might end up doing that just for the sake of having a beastly rig for a couple years. Especially with all the games that I play that are mostly single core based, based on that that max core speed of a single thread. So, righto, I'll see you again in the next series. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the Kingdom of the Kingdom of David and the Jews and all of their crazy antics. And I'll see you again in the next series. As always, thank you for watching. Do leave your comments down below about the ideas I talked about in this uh, this episode, especially the discussion about clear combat and if we should revitalize that. And I'll see you again soon. See you in a bit.